こんにちは。英語のシャドーイング練習教室へようこそ。司会のシャドウです。ここでは役立つ英会話を練習してネイティブ英語を身につけよう。日常生活で使える英語フレーズを10個、10回ずつ読み上げるから、その後に声に出して10回練習しよう。それじゃあ、始めるよう。Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Jordan, I've been watching a lot of American movies lately, and I've noticed there are specific phrases commonly used in romantic contexts. Could you help me understand some of these phrases? Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you.
Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. Of course, Alex. English, like many languages, has a variety of expressions specifically tailored for romantic situations. For instance, you mean the world to me is a powerful way to express deep affection, indicating that someone is extremely important to you. That's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard, I have a crush on you, in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you, is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. That's quite a heartfelt expression. 
I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. That's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. That's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. That's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. That's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. That's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. That's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. That's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest.
that's quite a heartfelt expression. I've also heard I have a crush on you in some movies. What exactly does that mean? I have a crush on you is a casual way of expressing that you're attracted to someone, usually in a more youthful or lighthearted sense. It's often used to describe the initial stages of romantic interest. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. 
Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. I see. And what about falling for someone? That seems a bit more serious. Yes, falling for someone implies developing strong feelings for another person, often unexpectedly. It's a step beyond a crush, suggesting a deeper emotional connection. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, 
which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. That makes sense. Are there phrases for when you want to take the relationship to the next level? Definitely. You might hear, will you go out with me, which is a common way to ask someone to start a romantic relationship. For even more serious intentions, will you be my girlfriend, is used to define the relationship formally. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. 
For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. Understood. And if someone wants to express their love directly, the most classic expression is, of course, I love you. It's direct and powerful. For a slightly less intense expression, some might say, I'm falling in love with you, which indicates the process of developing deep feelings. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart.
What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart. What if someone wants to compliment their partner in a romantic way? Compliments in romantic contexts often focus on both physical attributes and personal qualities. Phrases like, you're beautiful, or you have a beautiful soul, are common. You might also hear, I adore your sense of humor, or your kindness melts my heart.
Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone.
Those are very sweet. Are there idioms that are used in romantic contexts as well? Absolutely. For example, to be head over heels means to be deeply in love with someone. Another one is to be the apple of someone's eye, which means you're cherished above all others by someone. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. These expressions add so much color to conversations. I'll try to use them to better understand and enjoy English language movies and songs. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, 
so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. That's a great idea, Alex. Immersing yourself in the language through movies and music can make learning these expressions more natural and enjoyable. Remember, context is key, so pay attention to how and when these phrases are used for a deeper understanding. の練習はこれで終わりです。お疲れ様でした。もしよかったらチャンネル登録をお願いします。それじゃ、またね。